Now you gotta go run them or not the others. <laughs> that was a, a little start.
call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. We have uh, one board member absent this evening, board member Ryder. We'll move to the approval of the minutes of the meetings held May 24th and June 2nd. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That carries. Uh, we did not have anyone signed up to address the board, so we'll move on to approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved. Now to the good news report, Deanne. Good evening. Um, tonight I'm here to launch our first official action of the Sioux Falls School District 150th anniversary. As you know, uh, we were established July 3rd, 1871. And so during the 21-22 school year, we will be celebrating in a variety of different ways. And tonight I bring to you um, the results of our committee meeting and a suggestion that our committee had for us uh, as a way to celebrate the past and also the future. So um, we are going with the theme, rooted in the past, reaching for the future. And that theme was developed um, one of our committee members, Dina Barth, had tossed around and just she just said a phrase on a whim of rooted in the past and we couldn't quite come up with the next piece of it. Um, but Dina is credited with uh, starting or planting the seed, if you will, for uh, the theme for our 150th anniversary. Um, then we came up with our logo, which we showed you previously, um, a tree, and um, that tree has definite significance. Um, we wanted to plant a tree on the property of every school in Sioux Falls and every uh, school district property, if you will, and we will be doing that in September of 2021, so a couple of months from now. And tonight we are launching um, the opportunity for the community or individuals, groups, anyone who is interested to sponsor a tree at a particular location. You can choose the location you would like to um, donate the tree uh, and, and have a stake or a plaque there that has uh, a name written on it and who it's given in memory of and such. Um, we are looking to plant two to three inch trees at each of our locations and we'll need some planting supplies as well. Um, those trees need water. And so we'll be doing some watering bags and things like that as well. So um, out on our website, you can see we have that sponsorship location prominently placed. And if you click, into the red button. It tells you more and shows you the press release that I'll be um, referencing tonight. Um, trees, we decided, represent new hope, sustained growth, and a strong foundation on which to build. So the district's 150th anniversary planning committee chose the symbol of a tree and its theme to signify the public school's role as a major contributor to the success of Sioux Falls and its people. Families, businesses, service groups, and individuals, alumni, and friends are invited to sponsor a tree and be present on the school grounds when a ceremonial planting will take place in September. Trees are synonymous with the characteristics of protection, love, good health, and fortune, friendship, kindness, courage, happiness, and peace. And those are all uh, characteristics the settlers brought with them when they first came to Sioux Falls, and we still hold those characteristics very dear to our hearts today as well. Um, on the press release, and part of one of the finds that I've come across in looking 
through our, our past materials in our records room, um, is a house, uh, the Melvin Log House, and it's a picture of William Melvin's house taken in, eight, taken in 1866. You can see that what appears to be a tiny log cabin and, and the big mature trees in the background as well, proving that um, the natural beauty was there and that we want to continue to share with that natural beauty in our community with the uh, number of trees that are having to be taken down because of the um, emerald ash borer. We thought planting a tree uh, for the future and the signif significance that that has would be um, a way that we can contribute and give back to our community in general. So we invite folks who are interested to um, donate a tree in memory of someone, in honor of someone. I can tell you we already have one tree spoken for at one particular school, so that's super exciting, um, and we hope others will, will join us in this effort. Want to share a couple other things for you. Can I ask a quick question while we're doing that? I'm assuming you're talking diameter of the tree. Two to three inch diameter tree, yes, diameter. Yes. <laughs> that will, it will be in September, we've consulted with our, our tree expert, uh, Jeff Kreider, and uh, so he's getting some quotes on some bagged and burlapped trees that would be perfect for planting at that period of time. Thank you, not two to three inch <laughs> not, trees, not thank you. <laughs> Just yes, for those who thank you so much. <laughs> I'll see if I can get this up here. Well, anyway, um, there we have a, a digital time capsule that we have created as well, um, where people can submit photos <laughs> of their school days, maybe back in the 60s or 70s, or maybe even earlier than that. And so if people would like to submit um, pictures, they can do so on a digital time capsule. This link will take you there. It will allow you to upload a photo and um, write a little caption about that photo. And we're looking for absolutely everything. The way we have this designed is for um, 1871 to 1900, and then every 10 years after that, so by decade. So if you have children who went to school this fall and you took a photo of them on their, their first day, we are looking for that. It doesn't have to be super old historical black and white, um, type of, of um, material, but we'd love to have all of that as well. So if you have your, your parents' old um, letter jacket, take a picture of that, upload that picture, tell us who wore that letter jacket. I'm finding that Washington High School's logo changed several um, different times throughout the years, and it was Washington Senior High School, and you know it, it morphed over time. And so that really is about our past, and it tells us so much about uh, the people that came before us. So in July, we'll start with uh, once a month at the school board meetings, we'll be bringing an item and sharing an item with you to showcase some of the, the pieces of the past that we've come across. Um, but really, it's, it's been a great um, opportunity to really dig into the historical archives of the district. And I have to give credit, last time you asked me who was all on the planning committee, and I didn't have everyone's name, so I'm going to share those now. Ann Smith, who is uh, a former administrator with the district, Jeff Herbert, who was a longtime teacher at Washington High School and the Washington High custodian of records over there, if you will. He's still very involved in the uh, Washington High School uh, all school reunions and the pavilion and such. I mentioned Dina Barth, a former school board member and a former teacher. Allison Strzok, um, the Education Foundation is helping to support us as well in communication of uh, the tree sponsorships and just the 150th in general. Michelle Walter, who works at Avera and uh, is a graduate of our school district as well as um, her children. David Jahl, who has children in the Sioux Falls School District as well and uh, 
came to us as a, a refugee and has a wonderful story of success in our community. And Ruth Parkhurst, who um, is a community advocate and uh, I think Todd knows her as well. She's been a great supporter, has been a very involved parent in PTAs at Pettigrew uh, Memorial and Roosevelt. So um, really great ideas and anything you see coming out of this 150th um, anniversary, these events were really formulated by this group of people who, who thought it would be great to have um, the, the symbol of a tree to carry us through. Um, I also just heard from Lowell Elementary, they're celebrating their 130th anniversary this year. So they will be tag teaming and jumping on some of these other efforts and inviting um, alumni to come back to the school to talk to their students and talk to about what school was like back then. So we're really um, doing our best to um, share the significance of what the Sioux Falls Public Schools have meant to the city of Sioux Falls and what the city of Sioux Falls has meant to the school district as well. Any questions I can answer for you? No, thank you to the committee and you for all this work and I'm very excited for the celebration. It's a neat time to come forward, especially with the simultaneous opening of the two new buildings. Very exciting work for the Sioux Falls School District and I can't wait to see some of these historical facts. It will be neat to see all that. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Um, and we'll be launching um, and doing another piece out at Jefferson in August uh, that Dr. Sabin will have a um, sort of direction for the future of the district and such. So a uh, lot going on. I did invite our committee, committee members to attend tonight, but guess what? They have lives. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And the committee seemed to be such a well-rounded group of people, I'm attracting any you know interests of an arborist, environmentalist to yeah. photographers and history buffs, and so the attention to those details and the celebratory nature of the event and the comprehensive 150 years is really evident. And your yeah. work is pure. Seems Thank like you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's been great to work with these folks. And of course, they are um, people that carry the values of the Sioux Falls School District with them on their daily walk in life. And so um, they are very, very giving and uh, willing to come up with the ideas. And that was kind of the selling point is you can be on the planning committee and that means you don't necessarily have to do the work. And so I got a couple of buy-ins that way, but I'm putting a couple of them to work anyway. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Deanne. We'll move on to approval of the consent agenda, items 9A through E. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. They are approved. On to reports of the superintendent. We'll start first with the school improvement plans report. And Dr. Z. Good afternoon. I have two reports for you today, school improvement plans and then the federal consolidated application. Two for one, special tonight. The first is the school improvement plans and I will say that the building leadership teams worked very hard on their plans in a short period of time to look at the data and to develop plans for next year to help improve student learning. And that is a requirement of the school accreditation and Title I accountability. They used a new template this year, which is a plan, do, study, act, which I think lays it out really nicely. It's clear, it's easy to read, and uh, it will be something that they can follow throughout the year as they roll through the data and make adjustments as needed. The plan, the plans guide the schools' is work to meet the goals set forth by the South Dakota Department of Education and our district priority academic success. One of the four initiatives Sioux Falls System of Supports, Future Ready, Ready Learning and College and Career Readiness, Targeted Professional Development and Cultural Sensitive Practices. That is it for school improvement plans. Um, yeah. I just wanna say for the improvement plans will be up on the district website, but as a parent, this is such a better way that we're going to do it. It's much more transparent, it's much more, uh, 
better concise to how you can go look at your individual school instead of this huge spreadsheet of information and see what they're doing and compare them to other schools. Much easier to read. So thank you. I know it was a lot of work to do a new template and get the buy-in from the building administrators to make a change like this because change is hard for everyone. But it's much better for us as a board and for our community members who would like to look at this to read. So thank you for putting that effort in. So welcome from all the building leadership teams. You're very welcome. Any other questions for Dr. Z? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Are we? Is that it for the report? For that one. Yeah, well, that one. <laughs> we better. We better. Would you like to acknowledge yeah. that one? <laughs> do I have a motion to approve the individual school improvement plan? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Uh, any other questions or follow up with Dr. Z? Seeing none. Um, all those in favor of approving the individual school improvement plan signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. Those are approved. Thank you. Report number two, the federal consolidated application, which is our grant that we write to receive funds to help out. And we write for Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV, and I'll talk about those in just a moment. First, the allocation amounts for the last three years. Put three years in there so you could see the fluctuation. There's a reason for the fluctuation. There are several factors. One is census data comes in and also then formula counts. So once they have these plus some other things, then uh, an allocation is determined by the state that receives from the federal government. And if you look at the formula, you key in on Title I Part C, which by the way, we don't have yet, that still has to come down from the federal government. Once it does, then the state will give us our allocation. But that one's based upon the number of migrant students as well as other districts in the state that write for this grant. So if there are more districts out there, then we will receive less of that pie. And you look at Title I, it's gone down, and then it went up again this year to about 5.5 million. Again, Title I Part C, we're still waiting on that. Title I Part D is steady, around 260-some thousand dollars. Title II Part A is up from last year, a couple of hundred thousand. And Title III, our English learners, is uh, down from last year. And then Title IV at uh, 573,000. I will note that Title IV usually follows Title I the year later. So you can see that there was a dip last year in Title I, so there's a dip this year in Title IV. Title I funding recipients will include our 10 elementary title schools, including the Immersion Center, Bridges at Horace Mann, Hawthorne, Terry Redland, Lowell, Laura B. Anderson, Garfield, Hayward, Cleveland, and Annie Sullivan. And those are schools with high rates of poverty. And we need funds to help them out. And what we've done for our request is class size reduction in kindergarten and first grade, which brings our class size to about 18 to 20 in those grades. SIPs reading intervention teachers to help struggling readers. We have 217 preschool sites or slots. We fund instructional coaches, we fund English learner teachers, behavior supports and training for teachers, we have social workers, and then private schools do get their equitable services from there, and all based upon free or reduced lunch status. Title I Part C focuses on migrant education, homeschool liaison, school home liaisons, parent university, we have preschool slots for them as well, and then tuition for high school, summer school, for those who qualify, and professional development. Funding for Title D, neglected and delinquent students. We have a reading teacher at Summit Oaks that's located at Lutheran Social Services up on North 4th. We have a math teacher at the Juvenile Detention Center, and that math teacher is half-time there and is also the transition coordinator for those programs. And we have dropout and prevention success coordinators at the high schools. Title IIA is about ensuring excellent teaching, professional development. We hire instructional coaches at the elementary. We have Boys Town training for classroom management and behavior. Uh, the Teacher Pathway Program is in the high schools, and that's really targeting in on those students in the high school who maybe want to dip their toe into education. It gives them an opportunity to experience. And we have professional development and then again, equitable services for private schools, but in this case, it's on total enrollment. Title III focuses in on support for those English learners. 
education assistants at middle and high school. We have an EL instructional coach, PSYOP training, which is an acronym for best practices in EL teaching. Tuition and supplies for the ENL endorsement, that is English as a new language. So teachers can get that endorsement. And then again, equitable services for private schools, all based upon students who take the WIDA access test, which would be EL students. And then Title IV has three buckets. First, to improve conditions for learning. Second, ensure a well-rounded education. And three, enhance the use of technology. In improving conditions, we have the Eagle Vision program at George McGovern, which is like a tier two behavioral program. Joe Foss program has a counselor, and we have success coordinators at Whittier and McGovern. And in ensuring a well-rounded education, we have SIPS teachers. Our SIPS teachers have a, a coach, and we also have some fees paid for through the, or for the AP exams. In technology, we have our Schoology learning management system at the middle school level to help support teacher development and staff development and student learning. And again, equitable services for the private schools based upon total enrollment. Could you go back to the chart with the funding for the three year? Thank you. So um, on just a couple questions. On the migrant, do we have an idea of approximately when that funding will be announced from the state? I do not know for right now. They haven't disclosed that. Okay, and then on the Title III, does that also follow Title I Part A? I see the dip in that for the third year. Did we have, is that based on numbers of enrolled students who are English language learners, or how is that? Formulated? Yeah, based upon, again, two things. Uh, one is, uh, well, let's just say it's the WIDA yeah. test, along with the allocation that comes from the federal government. Okay. So Congress will, that feds, and then that will come down to the state. So there's no pie that gets shrunk if there's, say, more ELL students throughout the state, then our pie becomes smaller because the percentage is It's different. my understanding that one would only be for Title one c okay. in migrant. Okay, just on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Dr. Z? Thank you for all your work in getting these applications ready. And we all know documentation of these are not easy and it takes a lot of teamwork and mm -hmm. hurting of information from various people on a deadline. So thank you for all the efforts of your teams for getting this done. President Mickelson, I would just like to take a moment of privilege and commend Dr. Zeke. In a typical year, this role is very challenging. I don't think he probably knew um, B A G M S L E A E S E A E S S E R A R P E L S C I O P or S I O P E N L T S F or S I P in all its glory to the degree that he does right now. And so in a regular year, and then you put uh, everything on top of that with ESSER dollars and all of the complexities, it's, it's pretty impressive that he looks like he's just done this forever. So yeah. good job, Dr. Zeke. Isn't this the way it always is? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, federal consolidated report? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We move on to the public hearing on the waiver request for Spanish one. Dr. Boyson, thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm here for a public hearing on the request to renew the Spanish One waiver with the Department of Education. Sioux Falls District has held a waiver to allow students to take that Spanish One um, exemption, that course, that test before in eighth grade. And we just like to renew that waiver um, for that course equivalency exam for all four high schools and students that are in middle school. So if the waiver is approved, it's good from July 1, 2021 till June 30th, 2026. And so we're holding the public hearing tonight and we ask that you authorize the administration to proceed with the application for the waiver. Okay, I'll open up the public hearing. Would anyone like to address any questions to Dr. Boyson or the board? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Do any board members have any questions or comments for Dr. Boyson? Seeing none, do I have a motion to acknowledge the public hearing and authorize the administration? 
consideration to proceed with the application for a waiver from administrative rules. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion second. All those in favor of the acknowledgement signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same, same. Thank you. That is approved. Any other information for good of the meeting or questions? Seeing none, let's see. The next meeting will be board member Tolkien's last meeting, June, and then July we will um, have uh, Mr. Muren on the board. So that will be the transition and start of the new fiscal year for the school district, just for information. So thank you. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. Second. I have a motion second. All those who are in favor of um, the motion of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>